with ocean, with mountains, with the ecology of where those places come together. And see if the imagery in this poem takes you to that place. You're sitting in a boat in the water, looking around you. You might say, all the water below me came from above. All the clouds living in the mountains gave it to the rivers who gave it to the sea, which was their dying. And so I float on cloud become water, central sea surrounded by white mountains, the water salt, once fresh. Cloud fall and stream rush, tree root and tide bank, flowing to the river mouths and the mouths of the rivers, sing into the sea and the stories buried in the mountains, give out to the sea and the sea remembers and the sea remembers and sings back from the depths where nothing is forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. I don't know where I learned about stillness. I know that I use it as a discipline now in my writing. Somewhere along the way, I figured out that if I could be still, that the, uh, the, it was there. All I needed was there. I just needed to give it a place to come to the surface. And one of those places that I discovered recently is a place called Kangaroo Island. I was there yesterday, actually. For a couple of days of writing, it's the way I kickstart a book, get things going. And I was sitting in this, uh, Kangaroo Island, by the way, is more spectacular than the pictures. It's one of those few places where when you get there, you say, they didn't do it justice. And I was sitting in the dining room, looking out over this spectacular, unbelievable scenery. You know, the, the, the ocean coming into the rocks and shooting up, you know, 20, 30 meters in the air, just dramatic. And in between me and the window, there's a couple who had just arrived. And there, and I couldn't believe it. And so I made it a practice of watching at every meal. I never saw them look outside the window. I never saw them look up from their electronic devices. And I thought to myself, they were never here. And some words came back to me. I'm not sure where they came from, but we live so much of our time in the margins of our life. You know, we, we grow up, we go to school, we get a job, we get married, we have children, we get divorced, all sort of, at times, half-heartedly. And then, for many of us, there comes a point, a point like uh, the point that Dante describes in the Divine Commedia. In the middle of the road of our life, in the middle of the road of my life, I woke in a dark woods where the true way was solely lost. In the middle of the road of my life, I woke in a dark wood where the true way was solely lost. And we look around and the children are gone and we're 70 years old. And we say, my goodness, where's the time gone? And we decide to put ourselves in the center of the page. And we revisit our values. And we look at the way that we're living our life and we decide to make some changes. But it's not required. Trauma is not required. Death isn't required. Middle age crisis isn't required. You can move yourself to the center of the page at any time. And there's an old Indian poem that I would like you to consider as, perhaps with Robin's encouragement, primary imagery for this uh, conference. It comes from the northwest of the United States, and it's about being lost. When you're in the northwest of the United States, as, a, as an Indian, Native American, uh, with a forest so dense that you could just walk four or five meters into them and lose all sight of where you were and, and be totally confused, it was a real fear for children who were going to go into the forest for the first time without parental guidance. And so they might say to their grandma, their grandpa, Grandma, Grandpa, what do I do if I'm lost in the forest? And grandma and grandpa would answer this way. Stand still, stand still. The trees ahead and the bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here, and you must treat it as a powerful stranger, must ask to know it and be known. Listen, the forest breathes. I have made this place around you. If you must leave it, you can come back again, saying, here. No two trees are the same to raven. 
No two branches are the same to Wren. If what a tree or a branch does is lost on you, then you are surely lost. Stand still, stand still. The forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. I challenge you to be here for these two days, to be really here, to be still, to be lost, to not know, to be looking with all your senses keen as if this was a totally new place and you knew nothing about what was going to happen.